Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is on balancing chemical equations. Now, the need to balance equations is driven largely by the need to conserve mass. And so the objective in this is to take a chemical equation that turns some set of reactants into some set of products and make sure that we write that equation with the same number of atoms of each type on both sides of the equation. Now, a set of general rules for doing this is to start by balancing the elements that appear in only one reactant and one product, instead of one reactant and two products, or vice versa. Second, multiply through by common factors in order to accomplish two things. One, retain equal numbers of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. And secondly, to um, have stoichiometric coefficients, or the coefficients before the um, molecular names, to be integers and not fractions. Sometimes you'll see simple fractions in chemical equations, but usually we try to write these as integers. Third, if an atom appears in elemental form on at least one side of the equation, either reactants or products, for example, lots of times you'll consume oxygen uh, and it appears uh, in only one product, save it for last because this is relatively easy to do and you should really only do this step when you get stuck on some other step. So now we're going to go through uh, three examples of balancing equations. And the first example involves uh, the explosion of hydrogen, the reaction of hydrogen with oxygen to form water. And this was important in at least two very famous explosions that are depicted here, the burning and explosion of the Hindenburg in 1937, and also the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1986. So everyone knows, I think, that uh, hydrogen and oxygen will react to form water. But you'll notice that in the equation as I've written it, unbalanced, uh, there's twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms in the product, water, uh, as there are in the reactants as I've written them here. So the first thing that we need to do is to balance the oxygen. Um, and we notice that on the product side, we only have one oxygen atom. On the reactant side, we have two in O2. So we've uh, introduced a stoichiometric coefficient of two in front of the water to balance the oxygens. Now, unfortunately, in uh, balancing the oxygen, we have unbalanced the hydrogen. And so uh, when we consider the second step of balancing the hydrogen, we see that there are two hydrogen, four hydrogen atoms on the right-hand side, two for each water molecule, and only one on the left-hand side. So we introduce a second coefficient uh, on the reactant side, and now we have a completely balanced equation with four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms on each side of the equation. So that was a pretty simple example. Let's consider a little bit more complicated example, and that's uh, the combustion of propane. Now when you burn propane, for example, in a bar backyard barbecue, uh, you're reacting propane gas, which is C3H8, with oxygen from air, and you're forming carbon dioxide and water. So now we have uh, four different chemical species, one of which is elemental oxygen. and uh, According to the rule, we should look for elements that appear in only one compound on each side. We can see that carbon appears in propane only on the reactant side and CO2 only on the product side. Hydrogen appears only in propane on the left-hand side and only in water on the right-hand side. So we could do hydrogen or oxygen uh, next. It turns out that oxygen appears in three species, so we should save that for last. So. Uh, let's do carbon first. It uh, doesn't really matter very much which we do. And we see that there are three carbon atoms on the left-hand side and only one on the right-hand side. So the first thing we do is to introduce a stoichi stoichiometric coefficient of three in front of the CO2, and that balances the carbon. Now we go to hydrogen, and we see that there are eight hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side and only two on the right-hand side. So immediately we know that we have to introduce a stoichiometric coefficient of four in front of the water, and now the, the hydrogen is balanced on both sides. 
Finally, we come to the oxygen, and in order to balance this, we count up on the right-hand side that we have six oxygen atoms in the CO2 and four in the water. And so uh, we need a total of 10 oxygen atoms on the reactant side to balance this. Since we have O2, we need five O2 molecules in order to balance this equation. And we can check this at the end by noticing that we have three carbon atoms on each side, eight hydrogen atoms on each side, and ten oxygen atoms on each side of the equation, so we're perfectly balanced. Now the third example is going to be a much more difficult one, and this is uh, the combustion of ammonium perchlorate with aluminum uh, to form alumina, Al2O3, HCl, N2, and water. This reaction is an important reaction in the combustion that goes on inside solid rocket motors. So the two um, booster motors that are strapped to the side of the space shuttle are filled with ammonium perchlorate and aluminum and a little bit of uh, rubber binder for the, um, uh, to hold it all together. And this burns, and the white smoke that you see that comes out of the space shuttle um, is actually aluminum oxide or alumina uh, that comes out the the, bo the uh, back of the exhaust. Uh, also, N2 and H2O come out uh, as a, compo a major component of the exhaust, um, but those are in invisible and inert. HCl, hydrochloric acid, uh, also comes out the exhaust. It's also invisible, but it's not inert, and in fact it leads to a lot of corrosion of the metal parts around the uh, gantry and launch mechanism. Okay, so let's balance this reaction. Looks like uh, the chlorine is uh, already balanced, uh, the oxygen is balanced, and uh, the hydrogen looks like it could be balanced in a couple of different ways. We have four hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side and three on the right, but we could increase either the HCl or the water, and it's not completely clear which one uh, we should do. So that's a little bit ambiguous. Aluminum is present in elemental form, and uh, we should save that uh, until last. Nitrogen is also in elemental form, uh, but it's really uh, pretty easy to do. So let's uh, start by balancing the nitrogen, and we do that uh, by introducing the stoichiometric coefficient of 2 for the ammonium perchlorate, because that puts two nitrogen atoms on both sides of the equation. Now, uh, unfortunately, by balancing the nitrogen, we've unbalanced uh, the chlorine, and so we also need to multiply uh, the HCl by a factor of 2 in order to rebalance the uh, chlorine. Now that the relationship between the ammonium perchlorate and the HCl has been fixed by the need to keep the chlorine balanced, we can complete the reaction uh, balance for hydrogen by multiplying the water by 3. And what that will do is will give us um, 8 hydrogen atoms uh, on both sides of the equation. Uh, 4 times 2 for the ammonium perchlorate on the left hand side, and the 2 from HCl, and uh, 3 for water. So now we have a stoichiometric coefficient of 3 for water. Now, uh, everything is balanced except for the aluminum and the oxygen. We'll do the oxygen first because the aluminum can be balanced easily uh, because it's in elemental form on the left-hand side on the reactants. The, um, in order to balance the oxygen, we have um, 8 oxygen atoms on the left-hand side, and we have, um, in the products, 6. And so we're going to have to uh, adjust the Al2O3 to produce uh, two additional oxygen atoms on the product side. Now we can do this very easily by multiplying the stoichiometric coefficient on the aluminum oxide by 5 thirds, uh, but unfortunately that introduces a fraction. So what we can do now is multiply through everything, uh, everything through by 3, and what that will do is raise all of the stoichiometric coefficients and eliminate the denominator. And so now we have six ammonium perchlorates going to five um, aluminum oxides, six HCLs, three nitrogens, and nine um, water molecules. And the last thing, that, the last step is to balance the oxygen, uh, balance the aluminum.
And that's easy to do because in, on the product side, we have 10 aluminum atoms in the AL203. It only appears on one side, and so we can simply multiply the aluminum by a stoichiometric co coefficient of 10 in order to balance the equation. As a check, we count, and we have 6 nitrogen atoms, 24 hydrogen atoms, 6 chlorine atoms, 24 oxygen atoms, and 10 aluminum atoms on both sides of the equation, on each side of the equation. So that's a general um, uh, set of examples and a general strategy for balancing chemical, chemical equations. Next time we'll talk about organic compounds, we'll talk about saturated hydrocarbons, saturated and cyclic hydrocarbon, uh, unsaturated and cyclic hydrocarbons, we'll talk about functional groups and polymers. We'll see you then.